before diving into liver cleansing, let me ask you this. Do you often find yourself irritated? Maybe even angry? No, I didn't intend to become your therapist. But there's a notion that each emotion is closely tied to the functioning of specific organs. Irritation and anger are linked to the liver. So, if someone gets easily irritated, it might indicate liver issues. Is that really the case? And if it's not about emotions, then what is it? Today, you'll finally learn what truly harms your liver. And surprisingly, it's not just alcohol. You'll see the connection between liver diseases and stress. Did you think stress only messes with your nerves? Scientists have found a direct link between chronic stress and liver diseases, including cirrhosis. I'll explain why this happens and, most importantly, I'll share how to save your liver from cirrhosis. And, of course, I'll also talk about ways to cleanse your liver from toxins and buildup. So, let's break it down. What harms the liver? Which fast food is liver friendly? Where does the fat in alcohol come from? And is there really no such thing as toxins? Is green tea harmful to the liver? Is soda sweeter danger than alcohol? And how many kilograms until you get a fatty liver? Who's residing in your liver? How many liters of alcohol until cirrhosis? And is liver cleansing risky for your life? To give you an idea of whether you should keep watching, let's do a quick liver health test. It's simple. Just answer yes or no to my questions. Do you feel heaviness or pain in your right upper abdomen? Have you recently taken or are currently taking a large amount of medication? Do you feel heaviness and discomfort after fatty foods? Do you experience bitterness in your mouth? Is your complexion somewhat yellowish? Do you have a yellowish coating on your tomb? Are the whites of your eyes tinged with yellow? If you've answered yes three times, liver issues are likely. And you definitely need to watch this video through. If you haven't answered yes to any, your liver health is enviable. But if you want to understand how to prevent problems, let's continue. Here are the top 10 liver wreckers. Well, alcohol comes as no surprise in the first place. We'll tackle soda later. But stress. What's the liver got to do with nerves anyway? There are no nerve endings in the liver. So it doesn't take. Everyone knows that. Indeed. A person doesn't feel liver pain because it has very few nerve endings that could cause such pain from injuries or diseases. This makes diagnosis tricky. Symptoms are hidden. Elevated cholesterol, for example, is a sign. But it can only be detected through tests. You feel nothing. And the liver stays quiet. And you find out about liver problems by chance during some examination. Has that happened to any of you? Share with us in the comments. Yet, hidden liver issues can be noticed. Look, this is how people with a sick liver look. Their eyes and skin turn yellow. The yellow color comes from bilirubin, a pigment. Liver diseases disrupt the removal of this pigment from the body, causing it to accumulate in the blood, which manifests externally. But this symptom may not be present in the early stages. Then, Potential problems may be indicated by dry skin, pigmented spots, or rashes. Any allergy, in general, can signal that the liver is not functioning properly. Prolonged, unrelenting fatigue can also indicate problems. There's even a special term for it, hepatic fatigue. After all, our energy glucose is stored in the liver. With cirrhosis, these reserves deplete. Suspicious signs include xanthelasma, small subcutaneous fat deposits. They appear on eyelids, wrists, elbows, and other parts of the body. Spider veins and bruises, which occur even with minor injuries, are another signal. A sick liver also manifests itself with loss of appetite, frequent bloating, and bitterness in the mouth, especially in the mornings. Oh, and yellow coating on the tongue appears too. By the way, always pay special attention to your tongue, as it sometimes signals problems, not just with the liver. I'll tell you more about what the color of the coating on your tongue indicates later. But for now, let's get back to stress. Generally, I can say this about various emotions leading to specific diseases. It lacks scientific backing. It's not provable that irritability leads to liver diseases. But overall, 
doctors do acknowledge that negative emotions and stress do affect health. According to research conducted at the University of Edinburgh and Copenhagen University Hospital, a tendency towards developing liver cirrhosis exists in people who are constantly nervous and sleep deprived. Interestingly, the subjects were individuals without harmful habits or other risk factors leading to liver damage. It was solely negative emotions that affected their health. Here you go. Physicians from ancient times noticed the connection between a person's emotional state and their health. Even Hippocrates wrote about it. The thing is, negative emotions always equate to stress. So, stress leads to the formation of free radicals in large quantities. Free radicals weaken the liver's protective functions. Moreover, cortisol levels increase during stress. Despite its usefulness, when there's too much of it, cortisol exerts harmful effects. An excess of cortisol speeds up metabolism, and the liver, responsible for this metabolism, bears the brunt of it. And the liver already has an impressive workload because it's a multitasking organ. It handles over 500 tasks simultaneously with millions of chemical reactions. For example, it processes the medications you take and activates them. You could say the liver switches medications on. Without this, they'd be useless. But the liver not only switches substances on but also off, neutralizes them. This organ purifies the blood of toxins and infections. See. All the blood from the digestive tract first passes through the liver and only then enters the bloodstream. This means everything we eat and drink first goes through the liver. It's no wonder they say the liver is our filter. Wait a moment. In one of the previous videos, it was claimed that kidneys are our filter. Yes, that's correct. But kidneys filter the body's fluids, water, and lymph, while the liver filters blood. Approximately one and a half liters of blood pass through the liver every minute, and nearly 2,000 liters per day. That's a huge pool. Now, imagine that chemical waste and sewage have been dumped into this pool. Got the picture? It's terrifying, isn't it? Every filter, even a good one like the liver, has its limits. When the liver reaches its limit, they appear. Fatty liver and cirrhosis. It sounds scary. But it's even scarier in reality. Cirrhosis is the final stage of liver disease, the point of no return. However, it can take years from the onset of initial problems to the final stage because the liver miraculously has the ability to regenerate. The liver tries to heal damaged areas, like a sempstress patching up old clothes. Damaged tissue is replaced with connective tissue, and scar tissue forms in the liver's place. So, when asked how many liters of alcohol until cirrhosis, you could answer, roughly 40 grams of alcohol per day. That's one liter of beer per day. Cirrhosis develops over 10 to 15 years of alcohol abuse. Liver cells die from alcohol. But why, if the liver can regenerate, can't it do so with cirrhosis? Because the patched liver can't purify the blood and death occurs from toxins. It takes about 15 years for the liver's resilience to be completely depleted. But in the early stages, cirrhosis can be treated with complete abstinence from alcoholic beverages. And if it's non-alcoholic cirrhosis, treatment involves a change in lifestyle and diet. Only 50% of cirrhosis patients have alcohol-related cirrhosis. In other cases, alcohol isn't to blame. The cause of non-alcoholic cirrhosis is fatty liver disease or hepatic steatosis. This is when fat accumulates inside the liver, which can lead to cirrhosis even in teetotalers. I'll tell you how to rid the liver of fat today. And to understand why fat accumulates, I'll explain a couple of points about the liver's role. It used to be believed that the liver was a mythical organ, a sort of center of emotions and passions. The ancient Egyptians even believed that the liver was the seat of the soul. Well, I won't say anything about the soul, but it's absolutely true that the liver is the storeroom of our body. It's here, like in a good housekeeper's pantry, that useful substances are stored, glucose and vitamins. If the body stops getting these useful substances from food, it takes what it needs from the liver. And when you get sick, 
the liver gives away the vitamins needed for treatment, and our liver is also a storehouse of energy. Just as you store reserves for winter, the liver stores glycogen. This is an energy reserve in case you suddenly have to save the world. Glucose is either used for energy immediately or stored for later, and it's stored as glycogen in the liver. And in an emergency, the liver can quickly convert glycogen back into glucose for additional energy. But that's not all you can find in the liver's storehouse. More than half of the macrophages are found here, which help cleanse the blood of toxins. Let's delve into this a bit more. Macrophages. Who are they? Well, meet a special type of white blood cell that destroys bacteria and viruses to protect the body from infections. You could say they're the watchdogs of your immune system. So, even if your liver is fine, but you want to boost your immunity, you should start with liver cleansing. How? Let's discuss that next. We start liver cleansing with cleaning out the refrigerator. What can we do if our diseases are directly related to what we eat and drink? It's been proven by ducks. After all, you've probably heard that ducks are specifically raised for foie gras. It's a delicacy made from duck liver. To obtain it, ducks are force-fed, and the livers of these fattened birds noticeably increase in size. So, ducks have indeed proven that diet affects the liver and leads to fatty liver disease. In general, for people who don't drink or smoke. The diagnosis is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and the possible cirrhosis that follows prompts one question. Where from? If a person eats a lot of fat, too much, about 240 grams per day, that's roughly a big pack of butter. Fatty liver disease occurs in people due to excessive consumption of fatty foods and insufficient physical activity. Or perhaps, Every time you crave something delicious but fatty and harmful to the liver, you could remember that you're not a duck being force-fed for foie gras. It might help someone. But there are other ways to make the liver lose weight. And first of all, you need to give up alcohol because alcohol not only damages liver cells but also leads to fat accumulation. Stop. Does anyone know where the fat in alcohol comes from? No. If you don't know, hit the like button. And let's figure it out. Firstly, alcoholic drinks are very calorie dense. A shot of whiskey contains about 220 calories, like a hearty breakfast. Secondly, when alcohol enters the body, the liver starts processing it and turning calories into energy. And the excess calories that cannot be processed turn into fat. So, if you're thinking of indulging in a couple of glasses of sweet champagne with candies or pastries on Friday, you should think about your liver and take a close look at your tongue. Yes, your tongue, because it's the first to signal liver problems and not just with it. Now you'll learn how. As I mentioned earlier, yellow coating is an obvious sign of liver problems. White coating may indicate a fungal or other infection that the liver cannot handle. Gray coating likely indicates body intoxication and liver overload trying to cope with toxins. A dry tongue indicates liver problems due to metabolic disturbances. And a green, orange, or blue tongue color indicates that you've recently consumed a lot of soda with artificial colorings. And sweet soda is just as dangerous as alcohol. By the way, haven't thought about it. Sweet soda contains a dangerous chemical called sodium benzoate. It's a preservative that can lead to liver cirrhosis. British researcher Peter Piper found that sodium benzoate can damage liver cells. Do you need that? Moreover, soda is liquid calories that provide no satiety, and its high calorie content increases the risk of developing non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Let me tell you, sweet carbonated water is junk food, and your liver is not a trash can. Don't throw anything into it. Give up sweet sodas and you'll already help your liver get rid of fat. How else can you help? Lose extra weight yourself. But I must warn you that rapid weight loss with a strict diet and excessive physical exertion is absolutely not recommended. Because in this case, the load on the liver increases. Both dietitians and doctors warn about this. Let me explain. When you restrict your diet, the body uses up fat stores. But that's the whole point of losing weight. 
fat cells are destroyed, and free fatty acids appear. If you lose weight quickly, there will be a lot of them. The liver simply cannot cope with processing them. And as I've already mentioned, this is how fatty liver disease develops. As a result, the body loses weight, but the liver, on the contrary, gains. And do you want to know how to safely shed extra fat from your liver? I've found three products for you that make the liver lose weight. Number one, coffee helps remove fat from the liver. A 2020 study showed that daily coffee consumption reduces the risk of developing chronic liver diseases and their exacerbations, specifically fatty liver disease. The second product is oatmeal. It is known that the fiber in oatmeal is beneficial for the liver. One study conducted on rodents showed that oatmeal helps reduce the amount of fat stored in the liver. Of course, additional research is needed to definitively say the same effect on humans. But the fact that oatmeal is a healthy dietary product is a well-known fact. The third helper in cleansing the liver of fat deposits is green tea. It contains antioxidants that can help reduce fat deposits in the liver and contribute to weight loss in general. But there's one catch. Green tea is beneficial. But the extract of green tea, which contains certain food additives, attention, may be dangerous for the liver. Scientists from Rutgers University found that in high doses, tea extract can cause liver damage in a small group of people. It has been confirmed that green tea extract helps with obesity, but it negatively affects the liver of some people. Not everyone, of course. The reasons for this have not yet been fully understood. So be careful with food additives and drink tea to your health. So, what clogs the liver? What toxins? It turns out that there are no toxins. At least there is no such medical term. But the presence of toxins is not disputed by doctors. And the liver is the first organ to take the brunt of toxins. Moreover, the liver can cope even with an extremely large amount of harmful substances if its internal reserve is activated. And to make it clearer to you, I'll tell you a story that amazed me. In 2016, Charlotte from Virginia lifted a car to save her father, who was accidentally trapped under it. Her reaction to stress and the adrenaline rush allowed her to demonstrate incredible strength to save her father. In an emergency situation, the woman coped with a huge load, and our liver is capable of showing unprecedented strength and coping with a sharp release of a large amount of toxins in emergency situations, but not every day, constantly resisting them. It is not able to. Under the regular action of toxins, liver cells are destroyed. Actually, doctors don't really like to talk about toxins in the liver. And in general, many specialists believe that liver cleansing is a useless activity. And in some cases, dangerous. Attention. Liver cleansing can be dangerous for those who have stones in the gallbladder. For example, olive oil, which many use for liver cleansing has a pronounced choleretic effect, which can cause the stones to move, and the stones can block the bile ducts. So, please, first undergo an examination, consult a specialist, and only then consider cleansing if you really want to. And please, don't take the word cleansing literally. Liver tissue cannot be flushed with olive oil or lemon juice. And generally, it is believed that the liver cannot get dirty and toxins do not accumulate in the liver, unlike fat. That's the news. Why then cleanse? And how to do it? I'll tell you about it now. I've already explained that the liver is designed to process toxins and remove them from the body. While it neutralizes toxins, they damage its cells, and the damaged liver cannot function properly and fails to recover. So, cleansing the liver means helping it to recover with available and simple methods. This means activating the internal reserve of its cells for self-recovery. This means reducing the toxic load on it and getting rid of excess fat from the liver. That's what liver cleansing means and how to activate the internal reserve. For this, it is important to establish proper nutrition and normal blood circulation. That is, to take care of the health of the blood vessels. By the way, we have a video about this on our channel. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. So, how do you get rid of toxins? Drink more water. 
Make it a rule to drink at least 10 glasses of fluid a day. Water is salvation for the liver, as it flushes toxins out of the body. By the way, if you have a headache, it could be because you haven't been drinking enough, and toxins are causing this effect. Have some water, and the headache will go away. As for folk remedies, liver cleansing at home can vary, and everyone chooses what suits them. Everything I'm about to tell you is purely informative, and not an encouragement to use these methods. I'll give you the methods, but whether to use them or not, decide for yourself. Consulting with doctors. So, the most well-known remedy for cleansing is oats. Pour a cup of cleaned and rinsed oat grains into a thermos. Add a liter of boiling water, and let it steep for 12 hours. Then strain and drink half a glass three times a day before meals. The course lasts for one month. Another similar recipe involves using flax seeds. Put a tablespoon of seeds into a thermos and pour a glass of boiling water over them. Let it infuse for eight hours. Then add another glass of boiling water, strain, and divide into three doses. Dandelion. A well-known plant in folk medicine. For liver cleansing. Take a tablespoon of dried, chopped roots. Pour a glass of cold water over them. Boil for 15 minutes. Let it infuse for 30 minutes. And then take a quarter of a glass before meals three times a day. By the way, how do you cleanse your liver? Do you have any proven methods or remedies? Share in the comments. Friends, your advice might help someone avoid liver problems that have just begun. And what about saving the liver from cirrhosis? Treating cirrhosis, like any liver disease, begins with changing diet and lifestyle. As for lifestyle changes, I'm afraid there are no incredible secrets to surprise you with. Quit smoking and alcohol, healthy sleep, proper nutrition, adequate physical activity. That's all the advice. Alcohol and fatty foods, I'll repeat once again, are the most dangerous for the liver. Food high in sugar, artificial ingredients, flavorings, dyes, harmful fats, and trans fats is dangerous. You'll have to cut out fried foods, processed foods, canned goods, and fast food. In fast food, nitrates and nitrites are often used as food preservatives. Plus everything is cooked in large amounts of not-so-fresh oil, and it's excessively caloric. So, the answer to the question of which fast food doesn't harm the liver is simple. The one you didn't eat. Avoiding harmful foods and habits saves the liver from cirrhosis. And now let's try liver cleansing smoothies. Smoothies. Smoothies are blended vegetables or fruits with water. Here's a carrot smoothie recipe. Take one carrot, half a cucumber, and one stalk of celery. Blend everything in a blender with a small amount of water for easy drinking. One glass a day is enough. Don't like vegetables. Put fruits in the blender. The recipe is simple. Half a glass of apricot, one apple, one segment of grapefruit, one or two dates for sweetness, or a little honey, and about half a glass of water. 